Greetings from Tokyo. My name is Daisuke Beppu, and happy Halloween. I hope all of you are doing very well today, my friends. Continuing with the theme of the discussion regarding the films of Dario Argento, today I'd like to spend some time talking about the film The Cat O Nine Tales. talking about the follow-up by Dario Argento of his very famous and successful film, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. This is The Cat O' Nine Tales. Now again, if you don't want to be spoiled, I would encourage you uh, to stop this video and watch the film first before coming back because I will be talking about specific details of the plot. I'll try not to give away too much, but Again, uh, even minor spoilers would be a shame because this film is quite an interesting one. It's not the greatest Dario Argento film I've ever seen, but it's certainly very good. And I'd like to talk more about that with you if you don't mind. So now that you're here, I'm assuming that you don't mind being spoiled or that you already know the film. And so we can talk about it in detail. The mystery element, I think, is a bit bloated in the sense that we are dealing with this mystery involving the Tersi Institute and the Institute is involved in research about the XYY chromosome and so we are trying to figure out um, who is killing these people who are related to this Institute and then we have the mystery that is being uh, investigated by this reporter uh, Carlo uh, Giordani played by James Franciscus and then we have the blind puzzle maker played by, or his name is Franco Arnaud, played by Carl Malden. So we have a very interesting cast from the outset, uh, quite striking, uh, especially Carl Malden. You know, the, probably the, uh, it's, it's a really, um, I think, a very pleasant surprise uh, for those of, uh, you know, when I first discovered this film way back and you know, be, you know even when I was younger I knew Carl, who Carl Malden was he's a very famous actor and uh, the fact that I I found out that Carl Malden was a dar in, was in a Dario Argento film was really a pleasant surprise and he's really good in this film too he plays a, a blind man and um, he is very likable and there is something very innocent and charming about him and that plays off very nicely against the James Francis's character, who is more the physical type. He is um, uh, tr intrepid, but he also is not in any way dislikable, I think. They are both very uh, uh, sympathetic characters, and we are uh, drawn to them, I think, almost immediately. Um, and I think Carl Malden, too, being, uh, playing the character who is blind, you know, Arno, I think he adds an interesting element of continuity that uh, we started uh, to see in The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. And that will continue on throughout Argento's filmography, I think. And it's this, um, you know, we see his character listen to a particular conversation at the beginning of the film. And we find out that this conversation is actually quite a critical one because this conversation seems to set in motion the plot of the film uh, and the, the killings that take place. So in fact, he, Arnaud, the blind character, is, in, in, is a witness um, and we don't quite know uh, what it is that he has indeed witnessed. Uh, but we realize its significance as the film progresses. So in a sense, he is like um, uh, Sam uh, Dalmas, uh, the character in The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, who at the beginning of that film, if you recall, he witnesses the scene in the, in the, 
the art gallery, which sets in motion the plot of that film. Well, here there's a similar thing going on with uh, Carl Malden's character listening in on this conversation or eavesdropping in a particular moment. And in fact, the, um, uh, the, the mystery uh, element uh, kicks into high gear pretty soon after that. And there's another scene in the film as well where Carl Malden and the little girl, Lori, um, are uh, just talking with uh, one of the uh, supporting characters of the film. Her name is Bianca. And you remember there's a little sound that is heard or that is remarked upon by Lori. And it's very interesting because the sound is, uh, is a little clickety-clack and we don't quite know what it is until later on in the film where Carl Mullen's character realizes what that sound is and what the significance of that sound is, and it leads to a, a particular plot point involving, um, involving a locket. So this is an in another interesting thing. You know, we have a character who listens to something early on in the film, and then he doesn't quite realize its significance until much later in the narrative. So we have this uh, wonderful interplay between what is seen or heard at the beginning of the film, uh, which comes back to become reinterpreted and explained uh, in a way that uh, propels the story forward. So this is uh, echoing uh, stuff that we've already seen with Bird of the Crystal Plumage. This is foreshadowing, I'm sure, things that we will see in Deep Red and Suspiria and Tenebrae. So this is another element that is beginning to blossom in Dario Argento's style. Um, and then we also have uh, elements of Hitchcock in this film, Cat o' Nine Tales. If you recall, I was talking in the earlier film about uh, the ties to the cinematic past, in particular Hitchcock. Well, here in the Cat o' Nine Tales, we have a lot more uh, elements of Hitchcock here as well. Uh, we have very memorable scenes involving close-ups of milk. Uh, there's a very memorable scene involving milk and two glasses of milk. And so this recalls Hitchcock's um, uh, shots of milk in the very famous film Suspicion with Joan Fontaine and Cary Grant. There's also another film uh, by Hitchcock called Notorious, where the drink in question is not milk, but it's coffee in a cup. And so there's much detail and, and, and um, uh, attention given to this cup. Uh, so the same kind of shot, I think, is being employed in a very critical scene in the middle of the Cat O' Nine Tales involving uh, some suspicious glasses of milk. There's also another interesting tie with respect to the, um, uh, to the, uh, the character played by Catherine Spock, the, the, the kind of love interest, and she is driving uh, through the streets of Turin. Um, and she's driving very fast and uh, along the way she's being pursued by uh, cops and so this is interesting because we see um, her driving and she's sort of this young it girl type and she is driving and she's very free and carefree and she's driving a cool sports car so this is I for me anyway it recalls the scenes with Grace Kelly driving in the film To Catch a Thief if you remember or even the scenes involving Tippi Hedren and her driving the car very fast early in the film The Birds uh, so we have, I think, uh, very subtle callbacks to Hitchcock, which is, again, a continuation, I think, of this theme in Argento regarding uh, some kind of links to a cinematic past. Um, but then, again, we also have scenes that I think are very effective in and of themselves, and also they are connecting to stuff that we will see in future Argento. I think perhaps one of the most memorable scenes in this film, The Cat O' Nine Tales, is a scene involving uh, a train platform and a particular murder that involves uh, a train platform and falling uh, onto it um, in front of a moving train. It's quite a graphic scene and you see the body flip uh, quite unnaturally and you see the people taking pictures and um, but the reason why I bring this scene up is uh, for one thing it is 
a one of the great set pieces in this film and quite arguably I would say one of the great set pieces in all of Argento's work uh, the suspense that's uh, generated you know the close-up of the eye uh, the use of the point of view shots uh, the idea of um, a murder that's taking place in this bright daylight public space um, there is a certain amount of suspense generated and uh, the, the, I would say in particular the POV use of uh, the camera is quite ingenious and in, in one respect we see the victim actually go up and, and, and shake hands with the person before he's about to die so is a real uh, I would say tour de force of camera work. Uh, but if you recall, or, or if you are interested, you know, this will also uh, serve to be a very important way that a certain film um, uh, scene is shot in a later film called Tenebrae, uh, which involves a murder uh, that's taking place in this bright, wide open public space. So there's a certain link there, I think, um, uh, which I think is very interesting. And, and of course, there's this idea of suspense in an old dark house with the lights out and shadows and, and creepy crawlies and what's lurking behind the corner. But that is not what, not, that's not what's going on here, right? Here we have murder and suspense that's in the wide expanse in a public space and in many ways I would say this is even more frightening uh, so bravo to Argento for uh, doing something like this which I think takes a lot of skill and uh, a lot of uh, bravery to pull off and boy he pulls it off uh, really well to the point where again I think it, it's one of the great death scenes in uh, all of Argento's work then we have um, just other elements of this film which I think to this day I'm not quite sure. You know, when I first got this Arrow release, um, I really loved the film. I thought it was an amazing film and I was blown away by it. Uh, but now re-examining it, I'm, I'm, I feel like I'm of two minds. Uh, I still admire the film greatly, but there are some elements that I realize I'm not quite sure if I'm 100% totally on board. And I'll just give you a couple examples. So the first example is, I think, the, the general mystery, uh, the whole mystery plot element, what's going on. Um, I find it to be a little bit... Uh, uh, maybe the suspects are not as appealing or as exciting to me as, let's say, the suspects or the mystery element that we see in The Bird with the Crystal Plumage or that we will see in a later film like Four Flies on Grey Velvet. Also, the, the, I, I think the re resolution of the mystery the denouement is, I mean, while it's quite interesting, I think when I walk away from the film, I find it to be uh, not so memorable. In other words, I'm always struggling to remember who the the killer actually is. So perhaps that's a good thing. Every time I watch this film, I forget who the killer is. So it, it, it's always a surprise. Um, but th that's just me saying that the plot is not as, let's say, memorable, or it doesn't have the emotional punch of other memorable Dario, Dario Argento films. So maybe that is a good thing. But for my money, it's probably not the best mystery. Um, certainly not the most memorable mystery of all the Dario Argento film mysteries. That's not to say that it's a terrible mystery. I mean, it's a perfectly fine mystery, but it does lack a certain emotional punch, um, and it just kind of uh, ends uh, in a very uh, abrupt way. Uh, but I think Dario Argento makes up for this, and then some, in terms of the set pieces that he employs here. Um, certainly there's that memorable set piece involving the milk and Catherine Speck's character in the milk. Uh, it, it's, it's quite an interesting setup. You know, you have these two characters uh, having sex, and then the first thing they do after uh, having sex is they decide that they want to drink milk. So uh, it's pretty. Uh, it's a pretty interesting uh, uh, 
way to <laughs> to create this suspenseful scene. And uh, James Francisco's character doesn't realize that his two pouches of milk are leaking. Uh, yeah, he just proceeds to pour the milk in the glasses, and then the scene uh, plays out in a very suspenseful way, although it's a little bit ludicrous when you think about it. But I think this is just an example of Dario Gento's brilliance. You know, he, he sucks us in into these wonderful scenes. And then when you think about it, we realize that uh, there is a little bit of... Um, uh, uh, a lack of logic but I don't think it matters because ultimately we're having fun and we're uh, along for the ride and certainly that milk scene is an example um, and also the ending uh, without giving away too much you know the ending I think has a very uh, wild uh, action thriller type of um, ending with some resonance there. Um, I was I was going to say, well, I said that I didn't like the mystery element because I felt that the resolution of the killer didn't have any emotional punch to it, and I still believe that. But the ending, I think, is uh, pretty memorable for me, not because of the killer's arc, uh, necessarily, but because of the arc that we see with respect to the other characters. And so we see the James Franciscus character uh, and how his character uh, you know, leaves, you know, how the film ends with the situation involving his character. And it's quite shocking, actually. Um, and then also we see the Carl Malden character react in a certain way when he's told something by the killer. Uh, which uh, we're not even sure if, if the killer is lying or telling the truth. It's still a bit of a mystery. And in fact, when the film ends, the film ends on this wonderful ambiguous note. We're not quite sure if, uh, <laughs> if the killer told the truth about what happened to the little girl. And we're not quite sure what happened to the James Franciscus character. So, and it just ends on these wonderful notes of ambiguity and uh, uh, uncertainty, which is quite eerie when one thinks about it um, and also the the ending is and the abruptness of the ending it's really wonderful uh, here we get uh, uh, wonderful touches of a real palpable and uh, uh, how should I put it uh, it's a painful kind of horror that we're seeing for the first time, I think, in, in this film. Uh, we saw glimpses of it, I think, in The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, but in this film, uh, we do see it. You know, for example, when the, the woman, Bianca, is being killed, we see uh, her uh, spit coming out of her mouth as she's being, her face is being forced into the floor. So this is quite a, quite a, a disturbing image, um, and it reduces her to kind of this base level. Um, and uh, she just becomes an animal or a thing or something, which is even more frightening the way, uh, the way I'm remembering it in my mind. But this sort of spit or spittle uh, is, uh, will, uh, be, you know, foreshadows things that we will see in Deep Red, for example. Uh, but also at the, the end of the climax of this film, we see shots of uh, elevators, shafts, and um, you know the famous scene with the hands grabbing the wires and, and just going down, and the, you hear the, the, the scraping of the skin and, and uh, all that. So that just is a little ugh, kind of an eerie touch, uh, very palpable, very relatable, and thus uh, quite disturbing. And so we get this uh, wonderful, uh, abrupt finish uh, to this film. And this is going to be, uh, I think, this is the first time we see this in an Argento film. We didn't get quite an abrupt finish, did we, in The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, but we do get one here. And uh, this is, I think, going to start a bit of a tradition of the way Dario Argento finishes his films quite startling, quite shocking, uh, sometimes almost completely out of the blue, um, but it's in a very ingenious and memorable way uh, that only Dario Gento can do. It's quite fantastic, actually. So um, uh, there are some real great moments in this film, and there are some also some perplexing moments in this film, and perhaps not so good moments in this film. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, 
but it's quite, uh, I think, overall uh, an entertaining uh, film. It's certainly not a bad film, and it's certainly not Argento's worst film. Uh, it's, it's probably one of his better films, actually, but uh, it is one that, again, has some bad points and also has some good points. Okay, so let me end it there, and I hope that was interesting to you. If you have any questions or comments, as always, you can leave them below, and I'll try my best to address them. I should mention also that I apologize, but um, I usually don't uh, reply to comments uh, on Saturdays or Sundays or holidays, and that's just because I'm usually spending that time at home with my family, so I don't have time to uh, uh, write comments uh, as as much as I would otherwise like to. So um, uh, please just understand that, and I apologize in advance for that, so I hope you understand, um, but I will address them as quickly as I can. Um, and with that, I will let you go, and I want to say thank you very much, and until uh, I see you again, please uh, keep watching great films, keep watching a lot of Argento films. The next film, of course, is going to be Four Flies on Grey Velvet. So until then, my friends, take care.